I don't know what got you here, but thanks for pressing play on this broadcast since the message I have today probably pertains to you too. These next seven or so minutes are for artists and innovators, parents and spouses, educators and school leaders, from entrepreneurs to students of history to many more of y'all, including athletes. See, I don't know what got you here, but it got you here, so let me just talk to you like I'm talking to myself, as if we are one, as if we have won before and we'll be winning again. Many of us begin the calendar year thinking optimistically while we're witnessing and seeing other people winning publicly on big stages, in stadiums and arenas every year begins with a run of big wins under big lights. In music, for example, it's the Grammys. In sports, the Super Bowl. We've all experienced victory before, at least small wins, but probably bigger ones too, right? But what's the difference between our last win and our next win? Well, what got you here? The difference between a great achievement and a winning streak, or between a championship and a dynasty, is remembering what, what got, got you, you here. I'll illustrate it clearly and make it plain, but first, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been beat by a yardstick? How would it feel? I'm not sure how those questions land on you, but what if it wasn't you, but maybe a huge group of folks way bigger and stronger than you getting beat by a yardstick, like the legend of a giant getting killed by a rock from a slingshot? Could a whole team of National Football League champions get beat by a yardstick? Well, that's exactly what happened at Super Bowl 49. It was February 1st, 2015. The Seattle Seahawks were the defending NFL champions. The year before, they'd won 13 out of 16 games and easily beat the Denver Broncos to win the Super Bowl. Now they had a perfect chance to win it all again, back to back, this time against the New England Patriots. With one minute left in the game, their running back had just run the ball four yards to the one yard line. And this was far from an ordinary running back. This was Seattle Seahawks all-star Marshawn Lynch, also known as Beast Mode. He may be best known for what he said over and over at the Super Bowl press conference that day. I'm just here so I won't get fined. I'm just here so I won't get fined. But there's a lot more we need to remember. No running back was more dominant than Beast Mode was in the first five seasons of that decade. 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. He was one of a handful of running backs, averaging 1,200 yards a season running the ball that decade. He was the only one of them in the Super Bowl and twice in a row. Back to back, Beast Mode was the only person who ran for more than 60 touchdowns in those five years. And in each of the back to back seasons that the Seahawks went to the Super Bowl, he had the most rushing touchdowns in the NFL as well. So, according to mathematics, science, and common sense, on February 1st, 2015, when he and the Seahawks played in the Super Bowl for the second straight time, Beast Mode was, first of all, the most likely person in the whole NFL to run the ball forward more than one yard, and the most likely person to run a touchdown to win the Super Bowl. Marshawn Lynch, AKA Beast Mode, was averaging more than four yards per carry for the decade. He had run the ball 24 times in this Super Bowl and was averaging more than four yards per carry in this game. On the last play, he had just run the ball four yards to the one yard line. There's one minute left and they need just three feet to guarantee a second straight Super Bowl trophy. If you were the Seahawks, what would you do? So what did the Seahawks do? The same thing you can do when you forget what got you here. They chose not to give the ball to Beast Mode. They actually passed the ball and the pass was caught by the other team. Interception Patriots. Patriots win the Super Bowl by four points. The Seahawks forgot what got them here. So they literally and figuratively threw their next championship away. They basically lost by three feet. They got beat by a yardstick. So what does this have to do with you? Hmm. Consider the next personal or even professional victory that you have in mind. For all the injuries you sustain and all the opposition that exists, you have won and you'll win again. So what's the next win you have in mind? Hmm? Hold that thought for a moment and consider what got you here?
What did you practice? What did you do repeatedly, habitually? Who influenced you and supported you? What did you overcome to get in position for this next win you have in mind? The very next win. And what does all this have to do with me? See, I believe in taking all of my heritage, experience, context, conditioning, continuity, talent, discipline, and momentum forward with gratitude to help me remember what got me here. And it's been working. So artists and innovators, what got you here? What qualified you for your next project? Parents and spouses, what got you here? Ready to love some more. Educators and school leaders, which group of children would you say that their success is only a yardstick away for you? Entrepreneurs, what's been most effective so far? And then what can you also tighten up? And then students of history, what's worked before that we can still apply to make this wretched world a little better today? For your next best chance at your next victory, to convert a win into a streak or a title into an era, consider the question and keep it in mind. What got you here?